you should ask your investment manager for a, an analysis of the risks. Now, usually those come out in prospectuses. Now, nobody reads prospectuses very much, but if you do read them, you'll find that there's a, a, a risk assessment. And then you've got to ask, with respect to how you manage your money, is it suitable for your personal and family situation? Once again, everybody's different. They have children at university, they have, uh, like I'm at retirement age. You have to ask yourself, when you're looking at troubled times like this, if the investments really fit into your personal situation. And finally, uh, and once again, people don't ask this question often enough, do I need tax advice? The world is very complex, and I think many people, and I found this over the years, I should have got better tax advice earlier, simply because I didn't know I needed it. But as time goes on, and times become more turbulent, it is important. So, let me move to some final uh, concluding observations. The world will recover, but nobody knows when. I look at the financial press regularly, and I'm looking at some of the best analysts, and, and their analysis at the moment is fairly bleak. But the reality is nobody knows. What you've got is an unusual combination of enormous stimulus from governments. I think it's between four and maybe eight trillion dollars of stimulus between the US, uh, Europe, I think China announced 600 to 700 billion of stimulus. Uh, so on the one hand, you've got enormous stimulus. On the other hand, you've got incredible economic weakness. And this is an un unparalleled situation. So there isn't anybody who can, with confidence, give you any type of assessment as to how this thing will, will evolve. Secondly, there's not an exit strategy. If you think about the governments who have put, say, four to eight trillion dollars into stimulus. In the United, and, and, and further, in the United Kingdom, uh, the government is the major stockholder now in a number of the major banks. And in the United States, the US government is a major investor in banks and has acquired their debt. What is the exit strategy? How do governments extricate themselves around the world from some of the stimulus and the adjustments they've made? Because it isn't simply good enough to, uh, to try and make the world recover from this. You actually need a plan that helps governments and investors see what will happen. Uh, I'm not sure how global imbalances will be solved. Uh, can the American consumer keep uh, going further into debt and having countries in Asia and elsewhere merely keep acquiring US government bonds? I don't think that's a long-term solution. But equally, if the Americans stop consuming, the rest of the world is worse off. So we've got a very ugly situation around global imbalances. And finally, just to make your day, nobody knows what further shocks are going to occur. You know, we've always assumed that we're digging ourselves out from the subprime mortgage crisis in the United States that had global ramifications. But nobody knows whether, what if you had another SARS epidemic on top of this? What if you had further economic decline in various countries? What if you had trade protectionism? In terms of globalization, after the heads of state met in the United States in November at the Group of 20, uh, they committed to certain international actions, and within two weeks, two of the countries had already violated them on trade policy. So this is a very dangerous time for government policy and for globalization. So, my final conclusions, and they're just for me, because everybody's different, I'm gonna be very cautious. I'm gonna be carefully diversified. But even that's kind of hard now, because the Canadian dollar is so low, that what is the right strategy if the Canadian dollar recovers, right? So if oil and commodities go up, uh, to have been diversified, to diversified currencies could be risky. Uh, I'm gonna do lower risk investing that allows me to sleep comfortably but you do that at the cost of lower returns. And I'm gonna remember that nobody knows the answer. I'm gonna read the papers diligently, I'm gonna, going to read investment reports, but I'm gonna remember that none of them know the answer. And I think that's important for us to realize that we're in uncertain times and we don't want to make decisions based upon the world returning immediately to the way it was. But there are great opportunities too. 
And when the markets are beaten up as badly as they are, there have to be some wonderful opportunities out there. But they're going to be carefully hidden. These jewels of investments are not going to be obvious to a lot of people, and they will repay analysis. So, my final, final conclusion is it's easier to lose money than make money. Right? I've learned that. We've all learned that. But what is the consequence of that? If you cannot understand an investment,